What's up everyone? Don't you agree that music just makes every ride better? But having earphones in your ear is super sketchy because you can't hear cars coming up behind you. The other alternative, bone conducting earphones, the sound quality is just pants. Your favorite music turns into a super tinny rendition, like someone's playing it down the phone to you. That's where today's product comes in, Ola Dance and their OWS wearable stereo. Let's find out more. Throw your bone conducting headphones in the trash and pick up a set of these, the Ola Dance OWS. Your ears will thank you. Everyone knows the conundrum. You want to listen to music or podcasts when you're riding, but you still want to be hear what's going on around you. Uh, even with a bike radar like the Magine I reviewed a few months back, I still think it's super sketchy riding around with ear pods plugged into your ears. Now, for the past few years, the solution to that problem has been bone conducting headphones. Uh, you had shocks or aftershocks as they used to be known and a bunch of other similar products like these ones I have here. Now, in case you've been living under a rock, uh, the way that these work is that instead of going in your ear canal, uh, they go around your head and then these bits here kind of press on the bones of your temple and then the sound vibrates through here and goes into your head like that. So, hey presto, you can still hear the music or still hear your podcast but your ears are open to the sounds that are around you so you can hear that big truck that's coming to run you over but there's like no bass like literally almost no bass now the fact that the music is kind of magically being teleported into your head you kind of give it a pass and you think oh you know it's still cool uh, but Really, the sound quality on these, it's very tinny, there's no low end, and everything just it gets a bit whiny. Like, anyone who's used bone conducting earphones from Shocks or Aftershocks or whoever, like, go down in the comments and share your thoughts so people can look and see it's not just me and, you know, get a good gist of what people think. Uh, so I used to wear these on, like, most of my training rides or solo rides or whatever, but, like, I kind of just stopped using them. Like, after listening to music for, like, an hour or two hours, it just gets, like, tiring on your ears. It's so, like, whiny and tinny and just high-end that, uh, yeah, it's it becomes less of a pleasure so yeah for the past couple of years now i've been basically doing my rides with no music at all if i really wanted to zone out like i'd even resort to like playing music through the speaker on my phone and like just putting that in my back pocket of my jersey because the sound quality of doing that was basically the same as using the bone conducting headphones and so that's when I got an interesting email. Now, like, ask any YouTuber. We get lots of emails asking us to review all sorts of weird and crazy stuff, but this one seemed to be a bit different. Uh, Ola Dance were claiming to have a solution to my very problem. Now, they call it wearable stereo, uh, and I'm naturally a bit of a skeptic, and working in marketing myself, my BS radar gets triggered very easily. Uh, now, basically, what the wearable stereo does is... It places a small speaker next to your ear, but outside of your ear canal. Now, I say a small speaker, uh, it's actually pretty big. The, the size of the main driver in here is 16.5 millimeters. Uh, for comparison, the main driver in the AirPods is 11 millimeters. So you're getting a bigger driver than you, what you get in an AirPod. And so basically speaking, the bigger your driver, the better it's gonna be able to produce bass. Uh, that's where you know your subwoofers are usually huge big speakers because a bigger driver can usually produce lower frequencies a lot better. Now, I'll admit, before that email, I'd never even heard of Oladance, uh, but their website looked slick, and I saw they'd been featured by both Forbes and Tech Radar. I did a little bit more digging around and also found out that the CEO of Oladance is a former Bose employee. So, curiosity got the better of me, and I asked Oladance to send me a pair to check out. Now, I got this pair, uh, got them out of the box, clipped them on my ears, and uh, pressed the little button on the side to start playing, and it just started playing the last thing that I was listening to, which just so happened to be Hot Stuff by Donna Summer. And now those first few chords and those drums, I genuinely couldn't believe it. Like, I paused the track, rewound it to the beginning, and just pressed start again. 
Now, I think I need to add some context to all of this. Like these are my daily drivers. Uh, these are the Sony WH-1000XM4s. Now these are like a $400 pair of headphones with noise canceling and all, the jazz, all that jazz generally regarded as a decent pair of headphones. So while I might not be the biggest audiophile in the world, it's fairly safe to say, you know, I appreciate good quality music and good quality sound. But yeah, so using the bone conducting headphones has definitely lowered my expectations on what an open ear solution can be. I was expecting these to be similar or maybe a little bit better, but the difference is quite literally night and day. Now, before I got them, I was thinking, you know, I had a look at how they worked and you know, there's a small speaker which sits next to your ear. Uh, and I was thinking like, how, how is that gonna sound good? I, I assumed it was just gonna sound like, you know, the speakers on your mobile phone uh, up next to your ear and just really quiet or something. But I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's because of the location of the speaker, how it's right next to your ear canal and the sound's getting bounced around the inside of your ear or something. I'm not sure what they're doing but it's something clever, like these things sound good. Uh, the sound is rich, it's layered, it's surprisingly bassy. Now, I mean, everything is relevant and everything needs some context, but when I say it's bassy, it's not like, you know, chest shaking 20 inch subwoofers bassy, but it's super close to the bass that I get from the Sonys and 10 or 20 times more bassy than what you get from the bone conduction earphones. So it's a super windy day here in Shaman today, so I hope you can hear me. Uh, I can certainly hear my music. So yeah, the only way I can describe it is literally like uh, the music's being like broadcast into your brain because you can still hear what's going on around you perfectly. Uh, and because obviously the headphones are stereo, your brain just feels like the music's coming from the center of your own head. Touch controls are super convenient. So volume up, you just slide on up, and the volume goes up. If you want to pause or play, just a single tap. Uh, if you want to go to the next song, double tap on the right one. And if you want to go to the previous song, double tap on the left one. Just take a few uses to get used to where they are in relation to your ears, but once you're used to it, you can easily double tap to go straight to the next song. And down after feel about for it is or anything. Woo, it's windy today. Let's see if we can find a road with less wind. But yeah, the best thing is just the fact that you can still hear what's going on around you. Obviously, when you're riding, you want to be able to hear what's going on around you so you don't get smashed into. But personally, I like to be able to hear what my drive train's doing and stuff. You know, if it's starting to be a bit noisy, you know your rear derailleur's not quite set up right, etc., etc. Of course, unless you've got a creaking bottom bracket, then you might not want to be able to hear it, but so far, no such issues on my Cirque here. As for the comfort of wearing them, uh, you can see here, like, no problem, doesn't get anywhere near the helmet, sunglasses don't interfere with it, and literally, you forget you're wearing them. The pressure that they put down on your ears, like I said, I think they're like 12 grams each, so the pressure that they put down on your ears, you can't notice. Oh, true, true. But yeah, uh, again, super surreal how it just sounds like the music is coming from inside your own brain. It kind of makes, kind of makes life feel like you're in a, a movie or a video game or something. Just cruising around, you can still hear what's going on, but there's just music being broadcast into your brain. Researching for this video, I saw Shocks. They also have the similar kind of thing called Open Dots, but like as of now, I can't find any pricing. There's a page about them on the Shocks website, but you can't buy them on the Shocks website, so I don't know what's going on with that. But I definitely think this is far superior to bone conduction, especially for music. One other thing about bone conduction headphones, like the Shocks, the band that goes around the back of your head, like sometimes if you've got a, a big drop on your road bike, and you know, you got your neck is kind of like up at an angle. I used to find the band would like sometimes mess around with the plastic on the back of your helmet and stuff. But obviously because this just slips on your ear, no such issues there. But yeah, it goes without saying that, you know, these days zone two training's all the rage, going out to do a, an hour and a half or two hours in zone two, like having something to listen to, 
definitely makes it a lot easier. And then if you're doing polarized training and you've got some heavy intervals to put in there too, then of course, having some of your favorite tunes blaring into your head is a, a way to dig deep. But you know, you can still hear your own breathing. And yeah, like I say, you just feel like you're a star in your own movie or video game or whatever. I still love being able to hear the clicks in my gears. This L2 group set shifting perfectly. Love it. Especially if you're like me and run a red on these deserted intersections. It's nice to be able to hear if something's coming. It's not the cheapest product in the world, but again, you've got X Bose uh, employees. You can also kind of imagine that maybe they're using the same factories that Bose and those guys are using. The price is you're getting what you pay for. But for the sets that I have here, for example, I think the current price is like 150 US dollars. And for a pair of headphones that are gonna give you good quality, uh, a lot better value, or at least a lot cheaper than my $400 Sony headphones. It's good to be able to hear all the sounds. Hear this water coming out of this water cannon here. Okay. Also, irony because of uh, obviously YouTube, monetization, copyright, blah, blah, blah. I can't actually show you what I'm listening to, but classics, classics. So again, these intersections, buses, trucks, and cars. Definitely love that I can hear what's going on, but still hear my tunes. Oh, I didn't talk about the volume. These things go super loud, so when I'm riding around here, uh, at the moment I have them on about 20% volume, and it's more than enough. Let me crank them up all the way. This is my grimacing face, and this volume, it's very loud. I can't hear that truck going past, but I can't really hear anything else because this is just so loud. It's nice that it goes so loud. But definitely wouldn't recommend riding around with them this loud. Ah, oh, okay. Woof. Yeah, so they go loud, so. If you are out and you're sure there's no traffic, I don't know, your bottom bracket's noisy or the wind's super noisy and you just want to overpower that noise, then yeah, you can crank these things up loud. I'd say 100% volume, the sound quality, like you can tell they're struggling, but literally you do not want to use them at 100% volume anyway, because it is so loud. So uh, if 50% volume on these things is already loud now this case it's not like an airpods case it doesn't have its own battery uh, but it is used for charging the uh, earphones so these earphones have their own like 16 hour battery uh, but once it's gone it's gone and putting them back in here won't charge it alone you have to plug in via the usb but yeah so this case is just for looking after them and also uh, for charging them via usb c but i think 16 hours of battery time is plenty so having another extra battery i don't think it's needed if you're the kind of person who thinks 16 hours isn't enough you've got two options and uh, number one just take a USB battery bank with you like this guy to charge them up or all of that themselves they do actually sell for like 50 bucks another case which has a built-in battery which can then charge these a few more times as well to give you know 30 40 50 somewhat crazy amount of hours uh, for me personally I think this is just fine but hey everyone has different needs right so I've been using both pairs of these for like uh, two weeks now and uh, yeah so I've said it before said it again there's no such thing as a perfect product in the world, but these are pretty close. If I'm nitpicking, and that's what you guys want me to do, I'd say one improvement for future versions or whatever would be the ability to link to multiple devices. So my $400 MX4 Sony's, they can link to my phone and my computer at the same time, which is nice if you, know, you listen to music on your 
computer or whatever and you get a, connect, a call on your phone, they'll automatically switch over to your phone. Whereas on these, at the OWS, you can only choose to connect to one device at a time. So uh, again, it's not a deal breaker because, uh, because they're open ear. If I'm listening to stuff on my computer and I get a call on my phone, I can just put the phone to my ear and answer the call uh, as you would without wearing earphones. So in that particular situation, it's not a deal breaker, but it would be nice to be able to connect to multiple things at the same time. But other than that, comfort, 10 out of 10. Audio quality, 9.5 out of 10. For comparison, I'd, I'd put bone conduction earphones at like four out of 10. And my Sony is at like 10 out of 10. So I'll put nine out of five for 10 for audio quality on these. Battery life, 10 out of 10. Uh, I, I went ages without recharging them. And I only got them down to like 20%. And when they do get down to like 20%, they do start to tell you. It'll whisper in your ear, you got 20% left. Uh, charging super fast, like I say. You charge them for like a tiny bit and they'll last for ages. Value, uh, I'm gonna say eight out of 10. Again, it's relative because it depends what you're coming from. Compared to my $400 Sonys, these are a bargain. But if you're not used to spending so much on headphones and electronics, then obviously $150 is a lot of money. I'll be a good boy and wait at this red light. I forgot to mention, they're obviously sweat proof. I'm sure if it started raining, uh, you know, they're gonna be fine when you're out riding. They're not gonna suffer from any little rain. They're not fully, fully waterproof. You know, don't go swimming in them or whatever, but <laughs> I don't know anyone who goes swimming with, uh, with their earphones anyway. So they got a green light, let's roll. Uh, what else do I need to give them a score out of 10 for? Comfort, 10 out of 10. Uh, I never, one thing about bone conducting earphones, like I don't think they're uncomfortable, so yeah, no problems there. Uh, but these are exactly the same, like you do not notice them in any way, shape or form. If I shake around my head, then my glasses fall off before these fall off. Like if I'm on the worst of the worst of the gravel, you can see my glasses fall off and these things are still in place. So yep, no problem for comfort or fit. Uh, overall, let's go for 9.5 out of 10. And that 0 0.5 out of 10 uh, that I'm taking off is just, I'd say, for the value, for the price. It would be nice for them to be cheaper, but hey, I understand. There's lots of R&D gone into these, and it's a nicely designed product. So I can understand, but of course, everyone always wants things to be cheaper. Uh, and the other thing that I'll knock a little bit of score off is just the lack of ability to, uh, to pair to multiple items at the same time. But 9.5 out of 10 for the Oladance OWS wearable headphones. Thoroughly recommend them. Like I say, it's impossible for me to show you just how good they sound, but I don't think you'll regret it. If you've got the money to spend, and you want the best audio quality when you're riding your bike, in my opinion, and according to what I've tried, there is nothing better than these headphones. So, link in description, like I say, uh, it's not even a commission link. I get no kickbacks when you buy them, so I'm just hand on the heart saying that this is the best way to listen to music when you're riding your bike. So, any other questions, let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, Ola Dance OWS, check them out. China Cycling, out.